we introduced that decibels is used to express a ratio between two levels. We're dealing with power levels. And a ratio, for example, between two power levels is just one power level divided by the other. If we want to express that ratio in decibels, then we take the logarithm in base 10 and then multiply by 10. Okay, so if one power level is 10 times, or is one power level is 100 times greater than another, then that ratio is 100 to 1. Or well, one is a hundred times bigger. So the, the ratio or the factor is 100 there. There are no units there. But we can also express that in dB. We have a hundred. Log of a hundred is two times by ten. We get 20 dB. So we can say one power level is 20 dB greater than the other. And we spoke about... Uh, we introduce the concept of gain and then finish with loss. So let's go back to our example from last lecture. We had a simple example of an amplifier. It takes some signal input and produces some signal out. And we can measure the power levels of those signals. And we say the input signal has power P in and the output signal has power P out. An amplifier, we know, should amplify the signal. The output should be larger than the input. But we can measure that, and we can specify a characteristic of that amplifier being by how much larger, the gain. So what we did is we gave some values. If the input was 1 watt and the output was, let's say, a, more, a nicer example, if the output was 2 watts, then the output is 2 times larger than the input. So we say the gain of that amplifier is 2, a factor of 2. There are no units. It's not two watts, two seconds, it's two. Two times. But we can also express that factor as in a logarithmic scale, that is in decibels. We take two, we log by 10, and log of two is about 0 0.3. 0 0.3 times 10 gives us about three. So a factor of two is the same as three dB three decibels. What's the units here? 3 dB. There are no units. Don't be confused. dB is not a unit. It's just really think of specifying a scale. Convert 2 with no units into another quantity. That quantity doesn't have units as well. So even though we write the letters dB after 3, it's not like 3 seconds, 3 meters, three watts, where seconds, meters and watts are units, they're measuring some quantity, dB is not a unit, it's just indicating the scale we're using. So we can convert to dB, and we saw a very nice one to remember, we double something, a factor of two, approximately three dB, not exactly, but about three dB. You halve something, you reduce it by a factor of 2, then you reduce it by a factor of about 3 dB. So 3 dB is nice to remember because we often double or half something. And the properties of logarithms is such that if we have a factor of 2 and we double it again to a factor of 4, then that's the same as taking our 3 dB and adding another 3 dB, giving us 6 dB. So a gain of a factor of 4 is the same as about 6 decibels. A gain of 10 is 10 dB, and we saw some other values, so just some example values. A nice thing about using decibels is even when we have very large factors here, in decibels it's only a small number. A million is 60 dB, a billion is 90 dB. So we're dealing with smaller numbers. And then finally, we mentioned at the end, loss. Gain is when we increase something. Loss is when we decrease. They're the inverse of each other. So if we had a, trans, a transmit power of 1 watt and a receive power of 0 0.1 watts, we start with 1. We end up with a smaller value. 
Well, the same way as before, the gain is 0 0.1. Output divided by input. The input is 0 0.1 times, oh, sorry, the output is 0 0.1 times the input. So the gain is 0 0.1. The log of 0 0.1 minus 1 times by 10 gives us minus 10 dB. So we say the gain in this case is minus 10 dB. But we can also think of that same quantity as a loss. We started with 1 watt, we ended up with 0 0.1 watts. We have reduced by a factor of 10. So we can say in this same case, the loss is a factor of 10. The output is 10 times smaller than the input. Or the output is 0 0.1 times larger than the input. It's the same. A loss of 10, the output is 10 times smaller than the input. Take the logarithm of 10, we get 1 times by 10, we get 10 dB. These four values, a gain of 0.1, a loss of 10, or a gain of minus 10 dB, a loss of 10 dB, are all the same. They all express the same quantity, just using different approaches. When we're using the, the, the factor, the gain and loss are one divided by each other, the inverse. One divided by 0 0.1 gives us the loss of 10. One divided by the loss gives us the gain. When we're using decibels, the properties of logarithms, instead of divide and multiply, we get subtract and addition. So a gain of minus 10 dB, the equivalent loss is plus 10 dB. A gain of minus 50 dB, the equivalent loss is plus 50 dB. So the, the inverse, in the, the additive in the inverse in this case. And another benefit of using dB is that when we do operations of uh, sequential operations, then we do addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction is easier than multiplying and dividing when we use the factors. So let's continue with a different maybe, example that will again use dB and introduce some new concepts. But before we do that, any questions on the example from yesterday? You should be able to convert a factor or a ratio to dB. Just take the logarithm in base 10, multiply by 10, and convert backwards given 20 dB convert back to 100. What do you do? 20 dB, take 20, divide by 10 gives us 2 and 10 to the power of 2 gives us 100. So remember how to do both ways. Let's consider another example. Let's consider our audio system that we use in this lecture room. So when I speak, I generate a signal, and eventually it gets to your ears. But in fact, if we think about the audio system, it goes through multiple components. When I speak, the audio signal comes out of my mouth, it goes to the microphone. The microphone sends a signal down this wire, and in my pocket there's this wireless transmitter. Okay, it goes to this box. This box sends a signal wirelessly to, if you look on the desk, there's a, a box here with some antennas that receives the signal. That sends a signal to an amplifier in the cabinet here. The amplifier, amplifier amplifies the signal, increases it, we have a gain. Sends a signal up to the speakers on the walls and then it goes down through the air to your ears. So we'll draw that and we'll put some numbers to that as to uh, some examples of what is the gain and loss of each component and look at uh, the receive power. I'll try and draw that uh, to represent what we have. So we have the transmitter. We start with me standing here and I speak and it goes to the microphone. We'll have to squeeze it in. Here's the microphone and the microphone is connected to this transmitter in my pocket and then it goes wirelessly to some box on the desk 
That's the wireless receiver on the desk. And that has a cable to an amplifier. And that amplifier has cables to the speakers. And then here you are with your ears that's going to receive that signal. So we have different components in this communication system. Let me make up some numbers to indicate the loss and gain of some of those components. And when I say make up, I'm going to just choose some numbers that are easy for me to calculate. They may not be so realistic. Okay, we don't. Uh, not too concerned about being realistic here, I just want to show some example calculations. When I talk, I create a sound out of my mouth, and then we can think that sound has some signal strength, some strength. How do we measure sound? Usually we think about sound pressure. There's some pressure. But let's, to make it easier, cheat a little bit and say that the, the sound that comes out of my mouth has some sig signal strength measured in watts, some transmit power. So I'll make up a number and say we transmit it about, uh, what, when I transmit with some power PT, let's say it's 10 microwatts. That's what we start with coming out of my mouth. Now that's not realistic again, that is we cheated, it should be a measure of pressure or microwatts per area. When the audio comes out of my mouth, it goes to the microphone and then the, the, the few centimeters and then it travels along this cable to the transmitter in my pocket. So from this point to this point, if we measured the power at the wireless transmitter here, would it be greater than, equal to, or less than 10 microwatts? Between my mouth, where it starts at 10 microwatts, goes to the microphone and then to the device in my pocket, the power level at the device in my pocket will be, will it be greater than, equal to, or less than 10 microwatts? Hands up for greater than. Hands up for equal to, the same as. Hands up for I don't know. Hands up for less than. All right, let's try a different one. Everyone put your hand up. See if your arms are working today. Everyone. Okay, now put your hand down if you think it's... <laughs> put your hand up. Put your hand down if you think it's less than. That is, the received power here is less than the transmitted power. Hand down. Put your hand down. It's less than. Why? Well, we know of an impairment called attenuation. When I transmit a signal, when it travels some distance, that signal attenuates, always. So I transmit a signal, if you measure it coming out of our mouth to be 10 microwatts, when it hits the microphone, it's going to be less than 10 microwatts because over that 5 centimetres, the signal has got smaller. It's attenuated. And as that signal travels from the microphone through the cable to the transmitter, it also attenuates. It gets smaller. Okay, so whenever a signal travels some distance, it gets weaker. So it's always going to be less than what it started out as. Unless there's some component in there that amplifies. Well, let's, this is not amplifying at this stage, so let's assume it, it just loses power. So we'll denote between my mouth and the wireless transmitter, I'll give it a value by how much does it get weaker by. Uh, let's say so we'll actually have a loss between here and here and I'm going, to make, I'm going to make up a value not so realistic but easy to calculate and we'll say the loss is a factor of 2. Instead of me writing a loss of 2, I'll write divide by 2. With a loss, we start with a power. The received power will be less than. 
By how much? By a factor of two. So effectively, we divide by two. In other words, if I transmit at 10 microwatts, if the loss is a factor of two, then at this point I'd receive at five microwatts. It's reduced by a factor of two. Let's consider the other components. Between the wireless transmitter and the wireless receiver on the desk, there's also some loss. The signal needs to travel through the air. As it propagates through some distance, it gets weaker. And let's say, I just put some nice numbers in here, it loses by a factor of 10 across this link. Here, it will be 10 times smaller than it was at this point. From the wireless transmitter to the amplifier, there's some cabling, and there's a small loss across that cable. And I'll put it to be a loss of 1.6. It be 1.6 times smaller across this link. The amplifier is our component that introduces a gain. It amplifies. It will take an input signal, whatever comes in, and the output should be should be bigger. So I'll say that the gain of the amplifier, and I'll make one up, is uh, 1,000. And I'll write that as multiply. What that means is this amplifier takes a signal with some power in, P in. P out would be 1,000 times larger than P in. If the input is 1 watt, the output is 1,000 watts. If the input is 1 milliwatt, the output is 1,000 milliwatts. That's all. A gain of 1,000. We multiply by 1,000. It sends a signal to the speakers on the walls, and let's say the, lo the loss across the cable is also 1.6. There's not, no, real no reality in these numbers here. I've just chosen them so that they'll be easy to calculate. And then from the speakers to your ears, let's say there's also a loss as the signal gets weaker of a factor of 10. What we want to know, if that's the system, what power do your ears receive the signal at? If I transmit at 10 microwatts, what do you receive? Calculate it. There's nothing to do with dB yet. This is just a calculation of gains and losses. How would you calculate it? Well, start with 10 microwatts, divide by two. The first loss, we reduce it by a factor of two be down to 5, then divide by 10, because that 5 microwatts is then reduced by a factor of 10. The next number, divide by 1.6, then times by 1,000, and then continue. And what's re received at your ears is the, the value that you get it when you calculate. We start with 10, we divide by 2, then the next stage we divide by 10, we reduce by another factor of 10, and then a factor of 1.6, then we times by 1,000, increase, divide by 1.6, then to your ears a factor of 10, and that should give us the receive power. 19.53 microwatts, the units we were using there as microwatts. We started with 10, we end up with 19.53, or about 20, about 20 microwatts. <clears throat> This is a U or a mu, the Greek letter mu. It's not an M. Just be careful with my writing. Micro. Micro is 10 to the power of minus 6.
Now let's do that again, but use decibels. The exact same calculation, but with a different scale. We said the first component had a loss of a factor of 2. Convert that to dB. 2. How many dB is 2? We 3. Right? That's a good one to remember. Half. We reduce by 3 dB. Why is it 3 or about 3? Log of 2 is 0 0.3 times by 10 gives us about 3. You can use your calculator, but let's approximate and say that this component 2 is equivalent to 3 dB and instead of me writing a loss similar to where I wrote divide well we can think we lose 3 dB it's actually a gain of minus 3 dB a factor of 10 convert to dB log of 10 is 1 times by 10 gives us simply 10 dB One point six. The reason I chose one point six is because it converts to about two dB. Log of one point six times by ten is about two. So the two dB for the next value. We're going to lose 2 dB. Our amplification by a factor of 1,000. How many dB? Calculate. Log of 1,000. 3. We're doing log base 10 here. 3 times 10, 30 dB. Not negative, it's plus. That's a, our gain. So we go up in that case. Divide by 1.6, again, is another minus 2 dB. And divide by 10, another minus 10 dB. So we start with 10 microwatts. And those components of loss and gain, we can measure them as 3 dB, or a gain of minus 3 dB, or a loss of 3 dB, whichever way you want to look at it. A gain of minus 10 dB, a gain of minus 2 dB, a gain of 30 dB. A negative gain is a loss. A loss of 2 dB, a loss of 10 dB. And we would, what we could do is, and I will not do it, we'll do an another step first. What we could do is say, okay, the total system gain or loss is just the summation of those components. Minus 3, minus 10, so we have minus 13, minus 15, plus 30 brings us up to 15 dB. Minus 2 is down to 13 dB. Minus 10 is... 3 dB. The total gain in this system is the summation of the component gains, which is 3 dB. If you add up those numbers, you get 3. So, does that make sense? Well, we transmit at 10 microwatts. The total gain is 3 dB. 3 dB is equivalent to a factor of 2. We start with 10 microwatts, we gain by a factor of 2, we should end up with 20 microwatts. Right, that's what we calculated before. So, sometimes dealing in dB is easier because instead of dividing and multiplying on my calculator, I can add and subtract in my head and find this is 3 dB, which is equivalent to a factor of 2. If we consider all of those components, if we add them all up, we end up with 
a total gain or a system gain of 3 dB. Or a factor of 2. We convert back, that becomes a factor of 2. So if our system gain is 2, then we start with 10, then we must end up with 20. And that makes sense with our previous calculation. That's what we got. So it's just a different approach to do the same problem. Any questions on that uh, conversion to dB? Don't get confused between gain and loss. Okay, be, be aware when we're talking about one or the other. Now the next part is the new part, which is confusing for some people. So any questions on dB so far? No questions? Good. Remember, we're using dB to indicate a ratio between two power levels, one divided by another, but just express it on a logarithmic scale. It turns out we can also use this decibel or logarithmic scale to express a ratio of, say, our transmit power, 10 microwatts, relative to some reference point. So we'll introduce a new concept and let's say we want to compare two power levels but we'll fix one of them. We'll fix one to a reference point. It's always the same and that will allow us to compare the other to that reference point. So let's do that by example and come back to explain the significance of it. Let's say we have a reference point of one watt. We want to compare power levels to one watt. Remember the gain is one power level divided by another. Let's fix this power level to be one watt always and that will allow us to compare some other power level to one watt. So if our reference is one watt, let's consider our transmit power. PT and let's consider it on a logarithmic scale uh, what do we got? We have 10 log base 10 of the actual power level, 10 microwatts, relative to our reference point of 1 watt. We had a transmit power of 10 microwatts. We can also write that using dB on a logarithmic scale. And this is how we do it. We compare that 10 microwatts to our reference point of 1 watt. Simply 10 micro di watts divided by 1 watt. What's the answer of this? Here's when you need to rem remember your prefixes. Micro is 10 to the minus 6. 10 times 10 to the minus 6 is 10 to the minus 5. Ten to the power of minus five watts divided by one watt. The watts cancel out. One, we divide by one, we end up with ten to the power of minus five. Log in base ten of ten to the power of minus five is minus five. Times by ten, minus five times ten, minus fifty. So you can check that. Log in base 10 of 10 to the minus 5 is simply minus 5 times by 10 and we get minus 50. Here's the new thing, dB. We've converted to dB. 
that's the 10 log part. Instead of writing 10, minus 50 dB with a reference of 1 watt, we write W here, dBW, meaning our transmit power of 10 microwatts is minus 50 dB greater than 1 watt. The W refers to 1 watt here. So we often use 1 watt as a reference point to express an, a single power level. But sometimes we use a different reference point. Another one that we will commonly see is 1 milliwatt. So let's do the same again, same transmit power, but compare it to 1 milliwatt. That is, how does 10 microwatts compare to 1 milliwatt? And on our logarithmic scale, 10 log base 10, what was our power level? Same again, 10 microwatts divided by our reference point, which is now 1 milliwatt. Ten micro, we said, was ten to the power of minus five watts. We need to have the same prefix to be able to do the division. Let's convert it just to simply watts. One milliwatt is ten to the power of minus three watts. Ten to the power of minus five divided by ten to the power of minus three, what do we get? Ten to the power of minus two. Log of that gives us minus two times by ten. Minus twenty dB reference point is no longer a watt, the reference point is a milliwatt. So instead of writing dBW, we write dBMW. Everyone following? So this is not simply decibels, it's decibels reference to a particular value. And instead of me saying always reference point one watt or reference point one milliwatt, we write it here. Minus 50 dB referred to 1 watt. Or in this example, minus 20 dB referenced to 1 milliwatt. So we write dBMW here. But here's the trick. We're lazy sometimes. Instead of writing dBMW, we leave off the W. And you'll see it just dBM. So that's the confusing part for some people. We should write dBMW, but many people will not write that W. And it looks like dB meters, but it's not. That M there refers to milliwatts. And that's the common uh, notation that you'll see in practice. What does all this mean? We started with a transmit power. We said it was 10 microwatts. We could also write that as minus 50 dBW. Decibels, minus 50 decibels relative to one watt. Or it's the same as minus 20 decibels relative, relative to one milliwatt, m for milliwatt. They're the same numbers, same values, just on different scales. And it turns out in communication systems, often dBW and dBM are used. 
because in many communication systems the power levels are either very big or very, very small. Say in Wi-Fi, the receive power may be nanowatts, a very small value. Converting it to dBm makes it a nice value like minus 70 or something. So often, if you buy a wireless transmitter or receiver, in the specs, they'll specify the transmit and receive power, and they'll be expressed in dBm or sometimes dBw, not in watts, milliwatts, or microwatts. So it's important to know that. Any questions on converting one power level to dBw or to dBm? Then convert 20 microwatts. What was the receive power in our case? With the first question, the receive power we determined was 20 microwatts. Convert that to dBw and dBm. That is, do the conversion, but PR equals 20 microwatts. Remember from our original calculation, we determined PR is 20 microwatts. What is it in dBW and dBm? You may need your calculator. To find the dBW equivalent, divide it by one watt, and then logarithm times by 10. Here's a chance to use your phone. Instead of playing games and browsing the web in the lecture, then use your phone to, as a calculator. We have 20 micro divided by 1, and then log and times by 10. Anyone have an answer? 20 micro was the lo logarithm of 20 by 10 to the minus 6. And in, in exams, I always allow you to use your calculator, but no phones, of course. So make sure you do have a calculator by the time the midterm exam comes. Anyone get an answer? We're going to have 20 micro. Is that right? 20 by 10 to the power of minus 6 is the 20 microwatts. And we need to take the logarithm of that. Because when we divide by 1 watt, it becomes that value. And then times by 10. About minus 47 dBw. And in dBm, we have 20 microwatts divided by 1 milliwatt. Take the logarithm times by 10. What do you get? You'll calculate and you'll get about minus 17 dBm. Why do I know that? Well, look at the difference between dBw and dBm. We have the same power level. To calculate dBw, it's divided by 1 watt. To calculate dBm, it's divided by 
one milliwatt. There's a 1,000 times difference there, from one watt down to one milliwatt. So a factor of 1,000, log of 1,000 is 3 times by 10 is 30 dB difference. So there's always 30 dB difference between dBW and dBM. To convert, you can add 30 dB. Minus 50 plus 30 is minus 20. Minus 47 plus 30 is minus 17. Now you can calculate the, the manual way or you can remember the difference between the two. The other thing that we see, we went from 10 microwatts up to 20 microwatts. We doubled. We have an increase of a factor of 2 or an increase of 3 dB. Minus 50 dBW plus 3 dB minus 47. Minus 20 dBm plus 3 dB minus 17 dBm. So multiplying by 2 is the same as adding 3 dB. The last thing in this example. Coming back to our total gain. Remember the components, we had minus 3 dB, minus 10 and so on. Let's write them again. We start with, let's do it in dBm. We started with a transmit power of minus 20 dBm. That was the starting point. Then we had a loss of 3 dB. Then the next component was a loss of 10 dB. Then a loss of 2 dB. Then we had a gain of 30 dB. Then a loss of 2 dB. So this is just from the, the top example. And then a loss of 10 dB. What do we end up with? Add them up. So these are from the, the, the losses and gains from our audio system. But we started with a transmit power of minus 20 dBm. What do we end up with? A received power of minus 20, and here's the trick which confuses people. Remember, dB is not a unit. Decibels is not a unit. It's not like meters or seconds. So we can add these up. So if, don't be confused by seeing dB here and dBm here. Do we need to convert them? No. We can add them up as is. So we get minus 20, minus 3, so minus 23, Minus 33, minus 35. Negative 17 is the answer. You're too fast for me. Good. M minus 35, plus 30, we get up to minus 5, minus 7, minus 17. Correct. Minus 17 what? Not watts. Minus 17 dBm. relative to one milliwatt. So the answer of our received power is minus 17 dBm. Well, that's what we expected. We said minus 17 dBm is the same as 20 microwatts. When we calculated the very first way, we ended up with 20 microwatts. So it's the same, just a different approach. The point is that when we know the component gains and losses in dB, and if we know the transmit power in dBm or dBw, it's very easy to find the receive power. Just add and subtract. 
as opposed to multiplying and dividing. And many communication systems are analyzed in that way. Minus 17 dBm is the same as our first answer, 20 microwatts. <laughs> 